Welcome to module two of this course, starting to think responsively. Building websites used to be simple. We had a single design. We had to make the site look exactly like that design. And then we were done. Now there's some problems with that. Browsers used to render things differently. But at the end of the day, we just had this one layout to do. It was completely static. We just had to recreate what probably a Photoshop document that we were given looked like. And that was it. Now we have to take a design and we have to make it work on every device from a, sometimes a watch screen up to an 80 inch television. That's not necessarily something that's super easy to do. But we have the fundamentals down. We understand how to make a static site. So it's time to get into the responsive frame of mind. And we're going to work our way up from getting a design to simply work on a single screen size to, be a to being able to get it to work on any device. Thinking responsively isn't easy at first, but we are going to work our way up. We're going to be exploring the do's and don'ts. And we're going to look at how we can plan things out to make our life a little bit easier in the long run. But do know this is just an introduction to thinking responsively. We're not covering everything there is in this module about how to build a responsive website. We're getting our feet wet with it. We're going to start looking at a few new things, but I don't want to overwhelm. As I've said before, I like teaching through projects. We get a project, we're going to learn the different things we need to get that project to work. And then as we get into more complex projects, we can add on more complexity to the CSS. So we're always adding on new things, but we're not just dumping it all on at first. And this module is really going to set the stage for everything that's going to come. We're going to look at how to approach a layout. So you see a layout, like when you, when you see that layout, what do you do? How do you start planning? What do you, how are you supposed to start moving forward? Before we jump into the layouts, though, we're going to look at CSS units because well, we've seen pixels so far, but we have a whole bunch of different ones. We have ones that are absolute, we have relatives and percentage are sort of relative units as well. And we're going to be looking at all of those. We're going to be looking at the basics of Flexbox. Now, if you did the CSS crash course, you touched on Flexbox right at the end of it, but uh, we didn't really get into it. We just thought, well, it makes columns and that was it. So this one's not going to be a deep dive. I have a full module later on in the course. We're going to do a deep dive into Flexbox to really make sure we understand the ins and outs of it because Flexbox is complex. And again, I don't want to throw all this complexity at you and overwhelm you. Here's how we can start using Flexbox to just make things start working. And once you are comfortable being able to do that, Later on, we've had a lot of practice with it. We can up the complexity on it a little bit. And also the basics of media queries. So media queries are an essential tool in adapting our site to different screen sizes. We're going to be seeing in this just how they can work and how we can start using them to make our websites work across different sizes. We are going to work on a few different things, but this is the main thing we're going to be focusing on, which is a three page website that we're going to be doing. And we're going to be making it fully responsive. We're going to look at how we can go from the mobile view of that up to this full screen site, just like this one. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. So let's jump into the lessons and start learning. How do we can start thinking responsively?